Bible will give you all the things to give you the direction you need to find your money. Bless you, the woman, the woman that you are not. We are here for you, Lord. My Father, come and get your way. Come and protect us. Come and protect your glory. We surrender all our to I decree so that you may please. Come and get your way. Talk to us, oh God, my Father. Give us the heart of the flesh. Remove the, the stony heart in our hearts, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Today, I wanted to share something with us that we can see what is happening these days. That it's, it's, we, are no, we are not living a normal life as we used to live. It means this is the time we should make up our minds to go back to our Father, to worship Him in truth and in spirit, to seek His face, to seek the face of the God of, of Jacob. This is the time. This is not a time to joke. This is not a time to point fingers, fingers at others. This is not the time to waste. But this is the time for you and me to check ourselves, to ask ourselves, am I ready? Is my name written in the book of life? If anything happens, will I be there? Will I meet my God? Am I willing to meet my God? Am I a born again Christian? Am I serving God in truth and spirit? Am I rooted in Him? Am I pruned? Am I broken? This is the time we should ask ourselves these kind of questions. There is no more time to waste. This is the, the grace that God is giving us. We are in the extra time period. Just like when those people that who who watch football, when there is time, when there is time that all the, the, the both sides of the, the teams, they will be like zero, zero, or one, one, they will give them extra time. This is the time that we are. God with his infinite mercy is giving us the extra time. Do not use this extra time to do something that does not glorify God. Let us use this extra time, this grace period, to seek his face, to worship him in truth and in spirit. This is the question I am asking myself. I don't know about you, but me, this is the time I am saying, Lord Jesus, I surrender all unto you. Mold me. Give me the grace to allow you to correct me, to prune me, to remove anything that wants to hinder me, to see you, my father, to be raptured. Yes, we can say rapture can take place. Not now. Uh, some people, they, they, they can say it is in 20 years time or in 100, 100 years time. But we are not going to be here on earth for, for eternity. We are going somewhere. When you die, your rapture takes place. Whether it is going to take place while I am still alive, while we are still alive, but are we going to make it? That's the question. Are we going to make it? This is the time. We are supposed to live our life to work out our salvation with the fear and trembling. This is the time to seek our God, to worship him in truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Revelation 21 verse 27, let us read, but they shall be no means enter it, anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in Lamb's book of life. I always fear when I am reading this Bible, this Bible verse, the whole of Revelation. 
it will make you to be sober as a Christian. If you know exactly the purpose, you become a Christian. When you are just reading the, the book of Revelation, it will make you to be sober. It will make you to ask yourself, am I ready? Am I not a lukewarm? Am I not, have I not backslided? Am I still standing? Will my name be found in the book of life on that day? Will your name be found on that day in the book of life? Because these Bible verses, they are going to be fulfilled, my sisters, my brothers. It is going to be fulfilled. He said everything can pass by, but my words cannot pass by. His word is forever and ever. Will your name be found in the book of life? Will my name be found in the book of life? When you are standing on the line on that day, if you see an angel looking at you, looking at the book, looking at you again, looking at the book, know that something is wrong. And I always pray for the mercy of God to be upon me, that the angels will not look twice Look at me, look at the book, look at me, look at the book. It means my name is not there. They, are, they cannot find my name. That will not be my portion. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. If you are a serious Christian, you have to ask yourself every day. Ask yourself every day. I am asking myself every day, is my name written in the book of life? I don't know about you. Some people, they will say, God, do not remove my name in the book of life. Are you sure that it is? It is, is your name there? Is it written? Are you sure that your name is written? Because for you to make a, a sentence, a prayer to say, God, do not remove my name in the book of life. It means you, are, you have got confidence that my name is there. Paul, he said, after I have done all this, I am afraid that I will be like a signpost to direct others to say, this is where, this is heaven, this is heaven, this is the way to heaven. But you, you, who are, who are, are giving others the, 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 the sign to say, this is the way, you will miss it. Are we holier than Paul? Are you holier than Paul? He was not even sure that his name was written in the book of life. Do not deceive yourself. I don't want to deceive myself to think what I pray every day is God have mercy for on that day for my name to be found in the book of life. Anything that is hindering me, not my name to be written in the book of life. Lord, deal with it now while I'm still alive. Because I don't know who, who, who is righteous. Who can boast that my name is written? Who can boast? I don't know about you, but me, I will feel. I will feel. Each time when I'm sleeping, each time when I'm working, each time when I, I am walking, I am praying, I, I, God, I will feel that on that day, will the angels say, just look at me and look at the book and say, you are welcome. Are they going to say it? Or is the angel is going to look at me twice? If you see him doing this, make sure that you are in danger. This is the question that will make us to be sober. This is the question that it, it will make you to cry to your father. You say, Lord, my father, any crooked way in my life, father, strengthen it. Anything that is in my life, all my garments, that wants to defile my garments, that wants to hinder my name to be written in the book of life. This is the question that will make you to check yourself 
and you see if you are still standing, if you are still a child of God. This is the question that will make you to think, am I really a born again child of God? Are you born again? Am I a, a born again child of God? No more deceiving ourselves. No more deceive. We are not supposed to deceive ourselves. Examine, examine yourself. Weigh yourself. Put yourself on the spiritual scale and see if you are still standing or you have fallen long back, but you are still being deceived by speaking in tongues. You are still being deceived by praying two hours. You are still deceived that I go to church every day. I read the Bible. Are you doing what the Bible says? You are still speaking in tongues. Yes. Do not be deceived. Speaking in tongues cannot make us our names to be written in the book of life. It is only righteousness and holiness. Holiness and righteousness. He said, be holy for I am holy. Total repentance that comes from the heart. That is the only way for our names to be written in the book of life. Let us not deceive ourselves. Yes, you are doing the work of God. Yes, you have got a title. Yes, you are a powerful servant of God. Yes, you are converting others to come to Jesus. Yes, but that will not make you your name to be written in the book of life. Your heart, how is it? Your heart, how does your heart look like before your God, your character, your behavior? Are you holy? Inside and outside. Because it, it must start inside. Holiness must start in our hearts. Because the heart, that's where everything starts. Is your heart pure? Is my heart pure? Yes, you can do the work of God, but is your heart pure? Everything must start inside here. Love and forgiveness. And anything, because this bitterness, unforgiveness, malice, gossiping, everything is start from here. Is your heart pure? Then we go outside. If you have got a good heart, Definitely your character will be a true child of God, a born again. The way you talk, the way you answer, the way you behave, the way you, you react when somebody provokes you, it starts from here. If your heart is pure, like the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will be a clean person, a born again child of God. How does your heart look like before your father? Are you still running in this narrow path? Because this narrow path, <laughs> it's getting narrower and narrower every day. From the day you said, I now want to, I have decided to follow Jesus. That's the day you started to run in this narrow. And this narrow path, it is, it is getting narrower and narrower every day. Are you still in this narrow path? Am I still in this narrow path? Or oh, I have left it before, long back. Just thinking myself with my mind, with my self-righteousness, that I am thinking that I am still in this narrow path. Yet, I have left this narrow path long back. If you are not... <clears throat> If, if you are not feeling the same pain that our Lord Jesus Christ went through, be very careful. Maybe you have lost this narrow path. There is no way that we can escape because we cannot be greater than our master. If you are not facing persecutions, you are not facing problems, challenges, that means 
this narrow path, start to ask yourself, am I still in this narrow path? If you are still having the old character, the things that you, you used to have, this bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, the narrow path, you cannot run in the narrow path. Narrow path needs somebody who is light. Because if you are heavy with your bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, uh, 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 hatred, malice, you cannot be in the narrow path. Definitely you will fall. Narrow path, it, need, it needs somebody who is like somebody on diet, somebody who is light like a feather. When you are carrying all of this, you are saying on your top, there is forgive, unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, your shoulders, you have in, in your hands. Every character of the Satan is all over you. Be very careful. Because narrow path, you cannot, you cannot run in this narrow path with all these things. You need to, to be lighter. Somebody who is only focusing. Because if you don't focus, like those people, magicians, when you see magicians doing their things on the rope, they will be walking on a rope. They will tie it from this pole to that pole. You will be like two meters high, walking on that, on that wire or that rope. It means all his concentration, he is concentrating on just walking on this rope, walking on this, this wire that you will be walking. If he, he tries to look down or tries to look people that are watching him, he will fall. But you will be left, you will be just focusing where the rope ends. In. Is this how we are running this race? We are supposed to be like, to, to be very careful, to know when you are putting the and your foot, next foot, next, very careful. And you will be focused because if you lose focus, you will fall. This is how this narrow path is. Focus only to the cross, focus only to the end. If you, if you just want to check, to, 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 to check others, just want to watch others, or to see how, how high you are, you will fall. Let us be very careful. Let us be very careful. This is the time to work our salvation with the fear and trembling. Philippians 2, verse 12. This is the time, my sisters. No more time for looking at others. No more time for looking back, no more time of backsliding, no more time, our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you look, if you put, if you put your hands on the plow and you look back, you are not fit for my kingdom. This is not the time to look at somebody else, just to focus, just focus where you have decided to spend your eternity, where you are going, just to focus on the old cross. Just to focus. This is not the time to judge others. This is not the time to point others, to point fingers on others. Just to check when you are pointing at somebody else, four of your fingers, they are pointing at you. Matthew 3, Matthew 7. Verse 3 to 7. Matthew 7. Verse 3 to 5. Why do you seek? Why do you see a speck that is in your brother's eye? But do not notice a log that is in your own eye. Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye? When there is a long, a log in your own eye, you will be hypocrite. First, take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly and take the speck 
out of your brother's eye. This is not the time. Some people we are being deceived by our anointing, anointing of God that is in, uh, full in your life. You will start to just criticize others. You are seeing that you are holier than others. You are like you are judging others. We only have one judge. This is not the time to hear double-minded, to be a hypocrite. <laughs> if you want to be a child of God, be a child of God. If you want the things of the world, be of the world. Don't be a hypocrite. Let us not deceive ourselves. Because our Lord Jesus Christ said, if you are warm, look warm, he will spit, he will spit you out of his mouth. You cannot serve God with a double minded that you have decided to be in, in, uh, in, in, in Christianity and you still want to look back like Lotus wife. You are still admiring the things of this world. You cannot, you cannot be a child of God. A double-minded person cannot fit to be in the kingdom of God. Time to ask God. This is the time to ask God to give us the grace to deal or to work on our own weaknesses. I am praying for, for God to deal with my own weaknesses. Because this is the time. There is no other, other special time that God is going to give us again other than this. The grace that is giving us, this is the time that we are supposed to use this grace to deal and to work with our weaknesses. Those things that I am still doing, that I don't, I, I don't want to do anymore, you end up just doing them. These are the things that I'm crying to God to give me the grace to deal with every weakness in me for my name to be written in the book of life. For me to qualify to be raptured, to qualify to see my God, my creator who died for me. For me to spend his to, to spend my eternity with him. This is the time. I am crying every day. I don't know about you. This is the time as Christians we have decided to follow Jesus, to cry for God to give us the grace to work and to deal with our weaknesses in our lives. I know my weaknesses. So as you. You know your weaknesses. What are your weaknesses? This is the time to deal, to leave the wicked things that is, that is in our lives. This is the time to worship God in truth and in spirit, not to be a hypocrite. Am I truly saved? Are you truly saved? Christians, are we truly saved? Are we following Jesus in the straight and narrow path? Are we yielding, yielding to the Holy Spirit? Are we doing the will of God or we are doing our own will? The Bible tells us if you want to follow me, he said, carry your cross and follow me. Are we carrying our, our crosses and follow Jesus? He said, die to self every day. Not to say today you are dead, but tomorrow you will be alive. Don't be in coma. In coma, you are not dying. You are not dead. You are in coma. But when you wake up, 
you will be the way you were before. For us <laughs> to be the children of God, whose names will be written in the book of life, our Lord Jesus Christ said, die to self every day. Every day. Not today. Two weeks you will be alive. Then the next day you will be dead. It will not work. Let us die. Die to self every day. Crucify our flesh every day. Carry our crosses and follow you. Then we will make sure we will, we will, we will be we will have this, 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 this confidence that our names are written in the book of life. Only when we do this to crucify our flesh, to crucify the desire of the flesh, desire of the eyes, desire of the heart, and we die to self every day. Every day, die to self. Do we have the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of salvation? Do we have them? Do I have them all? Are they all functioning in my life? Because that is where this Christianity starts. Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. Let us read. Galatians 5. Verse 22 to 23, let us read. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Do you have the fruit of the Spirit, my sister, all of them? Do I have them? The love of God, is it in you? Is it in me? The love of God, is it in us as children of God? Do we have joy? Do we give others joy? Do we have peace? Do we give others peace? Do we have kindness? Or you have got a wicked heart? Is there goodness in your life? in my life? Are we faithful? Do we have this gentleness? Or we are still not broken? Do we have self-control? When somebody provokes you, how do you react? In times of anger, how do you answer? What are the words that comes from your mouth when you are angry, when somebody provokes you, when you are falsely accused? Do you have self-control? Can you control yourself not to sin against God when you see somebody who is working naked? Can you control yourself? Can you control the lust of the flesh? Can you control, can you control yourself not to love the things of the world. Not to love the things of the world. This is fashion. Can you control yourself? Do you have self-control? That no, me, I'm a child of God. I'm not going back again to Egypt. I'm not going back again to my vomit. Are you like that? Am I like that? Is my name written in the book of life? Am I a true born again child of God? Going to church will not make you to be a born again. Your name cannot be written in the book of life because your name is written in the book of your church. The register that you take every day on Sunday or Wednesday when you are doing Bible study to say, hey, she's here, she's here. This is not the book that will take us to heaven for our names to be written in heaven. Growing in a church 
growing in a family where your pa- your mother was a pastor, your, your, your uncle, your, 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 your grandparents, they were all Christians, they were all pastors. It will not make you your name to be written in the book of life. For your name to be written in the book of life, for my name to be written in the in the book of life, it's my personal holiness and righteousness. The way I am living, the way you are living. Did you change your mind? That you, I have decided to follow Jesus in truth and in spirit. Or will you are just saying, I want to be a child of God. I want to be like a sister. Hey, from the day she, she gave her life to Jesus, now she has got a steady boyfriend. So I want also to be like that. No, 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 no. It's not, it's, it is not going to be like that. Have you decided? Have you changed your mind? Have you repented from your heart? Did I repent? Repented from my heart. Genuine repentance, which is written in the Bible, that when a sinner is converted, the angels in heaven will be celebrating. Not this, 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 this uh, repentance that we are, we are hearing. Somebody will just, they will just go. You are going wherever you are going, or you are invited in a church. The pastor will be just uh, preaching. Hey, you receive your your car keys. Hey, give your life to Jesus for you to have a better life, for you to drive a nice car, for you to do this. Do you want this Jesus? Then you say, me, I want to be this. Altar calls that we are we are saying, I am a born again child. Here today we have won souls. This is not this the winning of souls that I am talking about. Repentance. That the 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 the, the, the heaven angels in heaven they will be celebrating that somebody was repented. Are you like that? Am I like that? Let us not deceive ourselves. Just let, let us check our Christianity, our born again. Have we repented with all our hearts? Have we decided to follow Jesus in truth and in spirit? Or we are just saying with our own mouth, but our hearts are far away, far away from him. This is the time to follow Jesus. This is the time to follow the true gospel that will only set us free. Only the truth will set us free. This is the time to follow the gospel that will prepare you and me to prepare ourselves for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ because he's coming. To prepare for our eternity because we are not of this earth. We are not of this world. We are going somewhere. That day, my sister, my brother, it will come. That day, it will come. To all of us, nobody is going to escape. We are not going to escape. This is the time to follow Jesus, to live in holiness and righteousness. This is the time to make up our minds. Let us read Acts, Acts 2, verse 37 to 39. Acts 2, verse 37 to 39. I read in Jesus' name. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and the brethren, what shall we do? This is the time that we are, we are supposed to hear the gospel that will cut our hearts and ask that preacher to ask that men and apostles and our brethren to say, what shall we do for us to be saved? What shall we do? We want to spend our eternity with this God that you are talking of. What shall we do for our names to be written in the book of life? What shall we do to live a holy life, to repent with all our, our, our hearts? What shall we do? Not the gospel that we are hearing in churches, that somebody will go to church with all his sins. I will go to church 
finished with all my sins. After the service, I will come back the same I was before. Nothing is going to change. Nothing has changed. No matter I will spend four hours in that service, I will just come back the same way I came in. Why are we wasting our time deceiving ourselves? This is the time of the ex, time of the ex of the old, the old of the old apostles when Peter, after he preached, people were cut to the hearts. The gospel that you will spare, they are asked to say, hey, I am a sinner. I need to repent. I need Jesus. I need the grace of God to transform my life. Not the gospel that you are hearing, that you are going to church only because of material things. And I will only hear the messages that will make me to be the same person. The same person I, I was before. I will continue. 15 years in church, no change. I'm still the same. My character, my talking, my behavior, my clothes, I'm still the same. Seek for the truth gospel. That will prepare you. That will transform you. That will convert you to be a true born again. Let us read. Let us continue. Verse 38. Then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you to, is for you and to, to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. This is the time to repent. Let us repent all our sins and let the Spirit of God fill us. Because how can we say we are the children of God? Our names are written in the book of life. We are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without the Spirit of God in us, who is going to lead us? Who is going to rebook us? Who is going to correct us? Who is going to direct us? We have this desire to be filled with the Spirit of God. To repent of all our sins. We cannot continue in our sins like this. And we call ourselves the children of God. And we call ourselves that we are waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us not deceive ourselves. Do we really believe in this Jesus that we are talking every day? Each time, some people, they cannot even spend one sentence without putting the name of Jesus there. But do you have this Jesus in you? Do you fear him? Do you believe in him? Do you want to spend your eternity with him? Because some people, if you are just speaking any nonsense discussion, you hear them say, Jesus Christ. Calling his name in vain. Let us, let us repent. Romans 10, verse 9. Let us, let us read Romans 10, verse 9. Romans 10, verse 9. I read in Jesus' name. What if you confess with your mouth that the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God is raised him? from the dead, you will be saved. There he is. For us to be saved, I don't know why we are still putting ourselves in bondage. Romans 10, verse 9 is telling us if we confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God sent our Lord Jesus Christ, he died for us and raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Are you worshipping him in truth and in spirit? Are you not far away from this Jesus that you are confessing every day with, with, with your mouth to say, hey, Jesus, this conversation, if one, something wants to happen, Jesus, let us not call this name in vain and let us respect this name. It is 
it is a name that is above all names. The name that we should fear because after mentioning of this name, every knee shall bow. Every other name shall bow. And you are just playing with your, in this name, Jesus, Jesus every day. Are you really saved? Are you a disciple of Jesus? Am I a disciple, is a disciple of Jesus? Can people around me, can people around you, your clothes, your clothes people, I'm talking of your clothes people, because in your church, you will be, you will know that I'm in church, I will behave. I will know how to behave at your workplace, in your, in your, in your area where you live. Can they see a change in you? Can they see a change in me? Can they call me a born again? Or it is only when I'm in church, only Sunday, or only when I go for Bible study. But all these days, I will be somebody that is in the world. Nobody knows that you, are you a, 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 a born again or a, you are still in the world? Because you are still in, you are still the same with those that are still in the world. Can they confess, can they witness that you are a true child of God? Are you not the old person that you used to be? Is there any change in you? Is there any change in me? Or oh, I'm still that in Dorothy that people know before. Do we have Jesus in me? Do I have Jesus in me? Do we have Jesus in us? Galatians 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who live in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It's no longer I who live, but Jesus. The problem that we are having most of the Christians is we still want to be ourselves. Yet we are saying we are now the children of God. Because we have been crucified with Christ. So it's no longer us we are supposed to live, but him. Our character must be of him. When we are talking, we are supposed to talk like him, to act like him, to behave like him, to live like him. That's why that we've been crucified with him. May God help us. May God help us. Because we are still want to be ourselves, the old self of yourself. That you want, you want still to, 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 to manifest, yet. It's not supposed to be like that. The one who is supposed to manifest love now in your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Is the Lord Jesus Christ. Did I crucify my flesh? Did you crucify your flesh? Are you crucifying your flesh? Am I crucifying my flesh? Or am I still allowing my flesh to control me? Are you not still allowing your flesh to control you? You still want to please the desire of this flesh than the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ, is, it doesn't matter. As long as I am, I, 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 I am like satisfying my flesh, this is what we are calling life. May God help us. May God Jesus help us. May God help us. If you are still having this anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, jealous, all sorts of courage of Satan, it means we are still our own. It's not our Lord Jesus Christ that is in us. Yet, Galatians 2.20 is telling us that we are not supposed to be us that is now living but Christ. 
These are the things that are making us, making our names not to be written in the book of life. Making us not to be ready, not to be near rapture, not to be near the presence of God. It pains, it pains so much that we are calling ourselves Christians, but we cannot be raptured. Calling ourselves Christians, but we don't have any courage of, of that, Christian, that Christ in us. Our lives are full of courage of the devil. It pains so much that we, we are not, not even near the presence of our father. We are like orphans, yet our father is a living God. He is alive, alive forevermore. We are like orphans, very far away from him. Like a prodigal son, very far away from him. Yet our father lives, the one who saves us, the one who loves us so much, who died for us on the cross, who is correcting us through his word. But we are just living the way that we want to live, not obeying his commandments, not obeying his word. We are doing opposite. Are we living in the spirit? Or we are living in the, in the, in the flesh? The works of the flesh, they are written all over us. Are we living in the spirit? Because if you are living in the spirit, you will not get it wrong. Are we living a blameless life before our God? Not before man, because men, you can deceive them, that they can think that we are living a blameless life. You are blameless, I am blameless. But before our Father, we cannot hide. There is nothing that we can hide. Everything He is going to show us, it is going to be revealed. How does God see you? How does God see me? When He's looking, and he's sitting on his throne. How does he seize you? How does he seize me? Am I pleasing this God? Am I fearing this God? Am I obeying his word? Am I the doer of his word? Or I'm just deceiving myself? Is my name written in the book of life? I am asking myself. Ask yourself. Are you a child of God? Are you born again? Is your name written? Have you separated yourself from sin? Have you separated yourself among those that are still in the world? Are you not defiling the temple of God? Are we not defiling the temple of God, which is our bodies? Are we still doing those filthy jokes? Watching movies with the pornography in the films that you call, you call Christian films. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't deceive yourself. Let us not deceive ourselves. How many movies that you are watching that you say this is a Christian movie, but they will end up in bed defiling your eyes, defiling the temple of God. Let us separate. Let us separate. Second Corinthians uh, chapter, chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be unequally yoked together with non-believers. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness? And what is common, or what is uh, communion, is light with darkness. Dark, darkness and light can never work together. Where is darkness? Don't go there. Where, what are you doing in darkness? Where, what am I doing in darkness? We are supposed to be the light to the world. We are the light of the world. Let us follow our Lord Jesus Christ, which is the light. The light of our lives. Have you separated yourself from the things that are in the world? Or maybe you are still 
in the things of the world. Come out. Let us come out among them. Let us come out from this world. We don't belong to this world. We are going somewhere. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am not of this world, so is this one. If we want to be the disciples of Jesus, we are supposed not to love the things of the world because we are not of this world. We are going somewhere and just like our father, where he is. Our behavior and character must, must, must show that we are not of this world. If we are, if and we if we are working with those non-believers, those that are still in the world, you end up having the same character of them. You have you you end up talking like them, you end up like yeah, doing whatever they are doing. You end up see it, it will start to be like a, a strange, but when you continue to be among them, you end up being like them. So if you are a Christian, just separate yourself. Have you separated yourself from the love of the things of this world? Am I separated from the things, the, from the love of the things of this world? This is fashion. Fashion. Or this fashion that you want to follow. Fashion. Most of the Christians, Satan is deceiving us because of the fashion. Why can't we separate ourselves? This is the time to separate ourselves. We don't need to love the things of this world. Go into places where many believers go. What are you doing to those parties? What are you doing joining those worldly groups that will corrupt your mind? What are you doing in that Facebook group that will send post those jokes, those naked people, those filthy jokes, those who be speaking the, the language of the world? And you are hearing them every day. And you are saying you are a child of God waiting for our Lord Jesus Christ to take us home. May God leave, leave mercy upon us. May God give us the grace, wisdom to know the people that we are supposed to separate ourselves. Some people, they are just, they, they are just, they, they, are, they, they will see their names being joined to the worldly groups. And they just want, they don't want to delete their names from those groups because they want, they don't want to hate their friends. They don't want to hate their, 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 their family members who have joined them. But to, to sin against your God, not to, 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 to <laughs> not to fear your God. You don't even care. You want to fear men than to fear your God. May God help us. If you don't separate yourself, it will be very impossible. Very impossible for me if I don't separate myself from all these things. For my name to be written in the book of life. For me to run in this narrow path. For me to focus to my eternity. Because I'm being distracted with all these things. Do you see sin as God sees it? Do you hate sin the way God hates it? Do you overcome sin the way our Lord Jesus Christ overcame? Because he has given us the grace. He has given us the power to overcome sin just like him. If we are truly the children of God, we can do it. We can do it. Because this is the promise that he gave us. Are you holy? Am I holy? Are we holy as Christians? The children of God, the church of God. Are we holy? First Peter 1, verse 15 to 16. Be holy, for I am holy. It means you and me, we can be holy. If it was not so, he was not going to tell us. That be a holy, for I am holy. The church of Christ, the body of Christ, are we holy? Are we still standing? Let us check ourselves. 
Check your life. Let us check our lives. Are we still standing? Are we still standing at the rock, which is our God? Or we are still we are still standing on the sand that if anything happens, we will just be moved. Or we are like wind, like a tree. When the wind blows to the left, you the, 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 the tree will also go to the left, go to the right, forward, back. Are we rooted in this Jesus? Let us not deceive ourselves. Some people will say, I can prophesy. I can make people to, 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 to conceive. I am winning souls. I am doing this. Yes, it is good. For you to do the work of God, it is very good. Very good. What you are doing, keep it up. But is your name written in the book of life? If our Lord Jesus Christ is to come today, or if anything happens to you and me, are you going to make it to enter? That's the question. Or maybe on that day, most of us will stand with confidence to say, I was prophesying, I was preaching, I won so many souls. I was paying my time. I was doing the work of God. I was holding a mic every day on the street, preaching the word of God. Laboring in vain. On that day, are you not going to be said, going to be told with our Lord Jesus Christ, depart from me. I never knew you. Am I not going to be a castaway on that day? Is our name is written. You can be a pastor. You can be an evangelist, a teacher, an apostle, a prophet. Yet your name will not be written in the book of life. God is not a respecter of any man. He is not a respecter of any man. Many will think that miracle and wonders can make us to be our names to be written in the book of life. No, 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 no. Let us not deceive ourselves. If it was not so, Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 21, it was not going to be written. Our Lord Jesus Christ was not going to say it. That not everyone who say to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God. But he who does the will of my father in heaven, listen very well, but he who does the will of my father in heaven are the ones that you are going to enter. 22, many will say to me on that day, you and me, are we not going to say, Lord, Lord, we have, we, did, we, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast demons in your name? Did we not do wonders and miracles in your name? Preaching in the street in your name? Listen to what he said. He, 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 he said, he said in, in verse 23, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You workers of iniquity. That will not be my, that my portion in Jesus' name. It will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Let us not labor in vain. Church of God, let us not labor in vain. Servants of God, let do not be deceived by miracle and wonders, by your gifts. Is your name written? Is your name written? God cannot change his standards because of a man, a mortal man. He cannot change his standards. God cannot change his ways because of your disobedience, because of your, 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 your sinning life. No. Let us be very careful. Are we walking right with our Father? Are we living our life as if today is your last day? If you fear God, if you want to make it, 
Let us live like today is my last. That when I pray, I will confess that if today is my last, God will have mercy. He said, I will have mercy upon him, I will have mercy. If we cry, if we, 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 we repent, he's willing, he's waiting to forgive all our sins. What is it that you have done, that I have done, that my father will not forgive us? He will forgive us. That's the reason why he came here on earth to die for you and me on the cross with a shameful and painful death. Do we want this shameful and painful death of our Lord Jesus Christ to be in vain? Because most of the Christians, our names are not written in the book of life. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. John 10, 10. John 10, verse 10. That is the purpose of Christ in, 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 in Christians. What about you? Have you repented your sins and you trusted in Christ alone for eternal salvation? I plead with you to do that today and you will go home saved, justified. Do you not want to spend your eternity with your father, to spend our eternity home? Let us repent with all our hearts. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hands. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my, of my father's hand. John 10, verse 28 to 29. If we obey, if we follow Jesus, if we, if we repent with all our hearts, nothing, nobody will snatch us from the hands of the Father. Why can't we obey? Why can't we follow this Jesus? Why can't we live in holiness and righteousness? Why can't we Turn away from our evil, from our wickedness, and start to follow Jesus in holiness and righteousness. Revelation 13, verse 8. All, will, all who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names they have not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. May God help us. Also, it is written. In Revelation 20, verse 15, and anyone not found written, if anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, my sisters, my brothers. This will not be our portion as Christians. Let us serve God in truth and in spirit. Let us work our salvation with fear and tremble. He died for us, for our names to be written in the book of life, for us to be saved, not to, to be cast into the lake of fire. That was the reason why our Lord Jesus came and he died with that shameful and painful death only to save my soul, your soul. Let us not send ourselves to the lake of fire. Please, our Lord Jesus Christ loves us so much. Let us repent. Let us go back to our Father. Let us repent all our sins. Let us not deceive ourselves. Let us not love the things of this world. Jesus Christ is coming. He is coming only for his bride. Only those that are walking in a narrow path, those that are putting on the, 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 the garments, clean garments, 
with pure hearts, those that are living in holiness and righteousness, inside and outside, those with pure hearts, may God help us. May God help us. This is what I wanted to share with you today. May God give us the grace. Jesus Christ loves us so much. Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. Hallelujah.